Long before Michael Rooker was Mary Poppins, (laughs) y'all, he was Henry, the very modern portrait of a serial killer. So, y'all ready to get into it? Let's delve on in. What's going on, Dungeon Dwellers? Welcome back to Dave's Dungeon. I am, as always, the one, the only, the illustrious Dungeon Master Dave. Bringing you the spooks that you cats and kittens all love. Yeah, I shouldn't use that one. That one's done by an actual serial killer. But today, we're here to talk about Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer. Um, Michael Rooker's... I don't know. I don't know if this is his first film, but this is definitely the one I know him from first. And I have to say, he is a phenomenal part of this film. I I just I don't know why I had to go so weird on that, but it it's almost like everything that was said in the movie felt still dead. But he just felt, I don't know, real. Like, his speech patterns were okay. Everything else felt a little too weird. Uh, I don't want to say that, necessarily. I will say, this movie is definitely of its time. So, before we get too far into it, look at me. I'm all giddy and excited to get into this, because it's so just... mm. We need to talk about the rules. Five criteria. You know what they are. Plot, special effects, tension, gore, killer, victim, etc. Ten points each. Out of 50, we grade them. Ready? Let's get off into it. I really like the way the plot of this starts. I love the way it carries through. A lot of the cinematography that you see in this is all about building the tension of of what we're watching in the actual visual you're watching the whole time. That's why it takes so long to get somewhere and it 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 focuses in on so many things at cre uh, at crucial and key times. I tried to say crucial. Uh crucial and key times. It it the cinematography focuses in and it tightens in and then tightens in and then tightens in until you start to feel a uh, pressure there. And the plot only helps elevate that and ramp it up, ramp it up, ramp it up. So, I really like the plot of this film, you know. And I've seen other films that were likely inspired by it, given that they come way after it. And they're doing much the same thing, you know. There are films like Creep. There are films like um, Behind the Mask, the story of Leslie Vernon. You know, they do something similar to this, but not in the same way. They're not as interested in the sort of analysis that this film isn't doing, but at the same time is giving you the observation to do yourself. Where those films tend to take a closer look excuse me, at the at the pretty overt form and format of most understood serial killer behaviors as we see them depicted in movies, this doesn't offer you the meta-analysis in a very refreshing way. And I think a lot of films need to go back to that. Um, man, there are some films like God Bless America that just they don't need to explain themselves so much and and other films of its ilk where you're trying to get something across that something has happened. You don't necessarily need to draw it out for me and explain it all the way. And I'm trying to watch that in my own work. Um, trying not to give you guys everything in the kitchen sink. Um, so for that reason, this film in plot gets a 10. I, I, I really love the plot of this film because this film should have like a secondary, secondary title. 
<laughs> called How to Convince Your Friends to Become Serial Killers with You. <laughs> Uh, featuring Michael Rooker. Um, man, he is a phenom in this film, and he's quite young, you know, and that's what kind of makes me think it is a first role for him, if not the first, a first. Um, I, it feels early because he's very young, you know, and as we see him nowadays, he's he's quite the grizzled man, but in this, he is quite young, so... That that could add a little bit to some of the awkwardness of the performance. But even that, like I said, it's a movie of its time. It really is. It's not made the way newer films are, and I'm grading it on a whole different curve compared to, I mean, classics. And this measures up. So, for that reason, plot's getting a 10. Special effects... Man, um, some of these don't look great. They don't hold up to modern standards. But who gives a shit? <laughs> I'm just going to say that out the gate right now. I don't care if they measure up. They worked for me. They worked enough for the time period and for the... I will say this. For the quality of the film, given its grain, and given that it's actually shot on film versus digital... The grittiness of the film added to the grittiness of the special effects, which made it all feel a little bit more real and practical, which most of it was. But it it comes to life in the grit, if that makes sense. It's not just that it's there. It's that it has a weight to it, and it has a shade to it, and it has a feel to it. It's gritty. It's... This movie does that so, so well. It definitely gets down into the muck and, and, and gives you a feel for what it's like. Not necessarily a view, but a feel. And and that's the sort of seductiveness of Henry's story. You know, that's what gets Otis into it is, you know, the you get a taste, you get a feel for it, and then you start to want it, and then you start to want the things it can give you but the man who's willing to share that with you isn't interested in that. He is completely working his own thing and has no interest in really letting you into this sort of shindig. He's just hanging around and using you for chum. <sighs> so for that reason... And by the way... This will have a spoiler section and a non-spoiler section. And we're in the non-spoiler section. So, spoilers. Um, there a little bit if you picked up on that. Sorry if I dropped that hint a little early if you haven't seen it. It's so hard to remember all the stuff that is in spoilers and not in spoilers. and yeah. Anyways, I'm working out my whole system. But my life is a hot mess, so just forgive me. Um... I, I really would appreciate it. <laughs> but the, uh, like I said, the special effects, again, could be like a nine. I would take like maybe a little bit off for some of the, some of the stuff. Tension throughout the film's a 10. It, there is not a moment where you're not scared for someone. And if you're not scared for someone, you're scared for your own self in a in a realistic sort of the violence is happening and you can sort of feel it and feel the threat to it you get what i'm saying it, it can put you there and i really feel like very few films can do that with their level of violence and gore and the tension is what really does it because you're 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 waiting for the pop gun basically on each event you're you're waiting for the starting of well you know what this guy's capable of but nobody else does nobody else treats him like a threat nobody else treats him like he's anything and yet and yet so for that reason tension's a 10 like I said, gore, I think, is a 10. I think this film treats it well. Special effects. Like I said, I'll take a little bit off for some of the kookier ones. But the gore itself was a 10. Uh, and the victim killer, 
I have to say is a 10 because it, not that there's one victim, granted, there is one killer across the movie. And where before Lars von Trier tried to sell us Jack, um, here's a movie that actually could pull off what that movie wanted to pull off. It, it actually does what that film played it doing. Um, to throw hot coals on the shade I've already given that film. I really gotta say, it, it is night and day watching that film and watching this one. The difference between the killers, the difference between the victims, the difference between the setups, the difference between the attitudes, motives, mentalities, psychology, philosophies, they're night and day. And this film is the 10 to that film's 1 to 2. And like I said, Matt Dillon could have very easily been the next Henry. He was not the problem. <sighs> problem is, is they weren't remaking, you know, Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer instead of the Lars von Trier film. But I think that's going to do it for the meat of this review. And like I said, this is a 50. Go see this film. And 49, 48, if you want to take some points off for its age, I'd let you go down to 45. But it's still an A. So suck an egg and a fart out of my butt. I don't care if you don't like it. Too bad. I did. But that's going to do it. I hope you like this review, though. We ain't got to fight over that. Make sure you leave a like. It really helps me out with YouTube. Let's them know I'm doing good work over here in these reviews and that you like what you see. So they'll tell their algorithm to send me five more people. And make sure you subscribe. If you are those five more people or you're a horror maniac here for everything, make sure you're subscribed so you know when stuff drops and you get it sent straight out to you. And ring the bell so you get all the notifications on when I drop stuff and that way you won't be in the dark. I'll make sure I drop any more news and any kind of other things in a video or two if you need an update. But for now, looks like things are going well. I hope to maybe drop in a few films that are going to debut later in October, and we'll see if we can get them in. But uh, the schedule may permit it, may not. We'll s tentatively, I am tentatively on track. <laughs> tentatively on track so let's see but that being said thank you guys so much for joining me this is going to be the end of the spoiler section so make sure your tray tables and seat backs are in their upright position and that all your belongings are stowed away time for you to run away little scared siblings time for you to flee Run. Spoilers incoming. Well, let's talk about them. <laughs> Sorry if I freaked you out. Everyone's entitled to one good scare, right? And you may be thinking I'm crazy now. If you don't know that by now. Hi. <laughs> um... And I hate this light because it keeps making me blink because it's really freaking bright. Um, the light is bright. I'm a creature of the darkness. <sighs> okay, hopefully the spoiler crowd or non-spoiler crowd has run away by now. I really love this film because it's like the plot makes you watch along with Henry. And it, it, it makes you almost feel complicit. In everything, because just like Otis, you were in on it. And just like Becky, you were willing to go along with it. And, you know, you're just as bad. You're, you're, in, you're in on the, the trouble. You're in on the terror. You're just as dark in, in the rat race as everybody. And that's a really good point of it. 
And when you mix that with the sort of atmospheric presence that you get from Rooker, where even his car becomes sort of the thing you look for when you're worried about where where is Henry and what is Henry doing. You know, you start looking for the car and you start looking for that license plate, GMV four seven zero. You know, you start you start looking for the the clues that let you know where he is because you're getting into the head of him. And I don't mean that in any kind of weird way because, well, actually, I do mean that in a weird way because the movie means that in a weird way. Um, this movie develops very much the sort of psychological, sexual analysis quite early in an attempt to sort of offer you a, a, a moist toilet of a reasoning and a rationale for why Henry is the way he is, which hardly fills the bucket, hardly fills the role, and you don't even really get a sense that that's the truth, given much of this film is a lie. You you think you think he's doing something for one reason when he's doing it for a completely different reason, and he's lying even to the people who are watching the film. Because you think about it, who is he really lying to for Becky's sake? He's not lying to Becky for Becky's sake. He's lying to Becky for our sake. And when he drops her off on the side of the road, sorry, got an itch on the foot. Um, when he drops her off on the side of the road, he expects that that's enough to signal us that that's done, that that's what happened. And you're like, well, why kill Becky? And it's like, well, why do you think he killed Becky? For the same reason he was fixing to kill Becky before Otis got involved. And that's sort of the dynamic here is like how much of his relationship was was the camaraderie of Otis versus how much of his relationship was with Becky and how much of that was just a put on versus, you know, how much of how much of his relationships are just put ons, to be perfectly honest, because you see him able to talk his way and convince so many different people from so many different walks of life to let him in. And to let him go the distance that he needs to go before he's too far in and now he's a problem. And that's sort of the magic here is he's so unsuspecting. And I don't mean that in a bad way. You, you suspect him the whole time as the viewer of the film. But you are watching normal people just sort of encounter him and trip over him who have no clue to what to look out for or who he is. And you get the sense that he's very non-threatening to most and to, to a, a large percentage of some, he's quite attractive and quite charismatic and quite nice and quite kind and um, kind of in the same way that Elijah Wood's character in the last film was like you have kind eyes you don't have a killer's eyes Henry has a killer's eyes but in soft moments he doesn't and with Becky he doesn't until it's too late for Becky <sighs> and the sort of message of it is still relevant and still poignant and it still holds up today that's what I'm that's that's kind of why I watched this film I wanted to see if it still held up I wanted to see if we were still getting the depth that you would expect from a film that's as old as it is and the acting and the technology and everything else that's gone into it is it still as deep as it was before? Does it still sort of drive to that powerful place? And does it still give you that eerie feeling and make everything on the back of your neck stand up and really sort of drive home the terror that is a serial killer? I think it does. I think it's still one of the toughest films to watch and really feel like you processed all of it, and I mean, it's it's phantasmagoria almost, um, with just the level of depravity and and some of the stuff we get into. 
Now, some of it's some of it's not so graphic, and some of it's silly in how graphic it is. So some moments don't land because they don't go far enough, and some moments don't land because they, I guess, go too far. Um, but all kind of movies kind of have that problem sometimes when when it comes to horror, where it goes a, a beat shy too far, a beat shy too shallow. But I don't know. It's still good fun for the whole family. And I think it's still one of the best sort of pictures for how to develop a villain that could carry a whole film. Lars von Trier, do your homework. When this, and when American Psycho, and when, I mean, just so many other films dealing with serial killers, scream for God's sakes. When these films exist, and you want to put that dog shit up against it, it just, it's an insult on an injury, and I won't forgive your ass for it. I thought Melancholia was the worst shit you could make me watch and sit through. I was wrong, and I want to punch you. But you're an old man, so I won't. Ah! All of my rage of current has been kind of pointing back at at a boogeyman. And I know some of you are going to have some trouble with this film. I know I did. I know I had my own struggles with it. I had my own sort of tense moment in the middle of the film. Well, I say middle. More like the last third to the end. Where it's like, you know, sort of everything going on with Otis is just further devolving. And... It gets really icky with the sister, and it's just, it's really hard to watch in that back half. So take care of yourself, everyone. Don't don't let it bother you too bad. Hopefully, it won't. But yeah, it. it I want to say this film is a good slap shot, a good cross section of the sort of monsters in the world that are like us. And, and I really think this is a good example of that, of the things in the world that are terrible and live amongst us and the things that are not necessarily unlike us. They can be other people, and those people can be some of the worst and most depraved things that live amongst us, the most evil and the most savage. So I really feel like this is one of those classic masterpieces that shows that off amongst the others I've named Scream, American Psycho I mean there are so many like this and even the slasher, uh, some of the more AAA and bigger titles and slashers they're still preoccupied with this of the evil and the depravity that lives amongst us, not necessarily buried in in an ancient tomb or hidden under the face of a untold evil, but hidden right in the hearts of the people right next to us. And that's what's real scary. That's where a movie really can mess with you and mess you up, make you not just scared, but afraid of things in a way that can be (laughs) really wrecking. So take care with it. I hope you guys are doing well with it. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. It is definitely one of the better films on the list, and I really hope you enjoy it. And it kind of satisfies my need to have a classic horror film in here every so often. You know, we had Scanners, and we have this one. You know, you got to stay fresh and regular with the Fiverr. (laughs) But anyways, thank you for joining me, Horror Maniacs and Dungeon Dwellers. I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, make sure you leave a like. Make sure you subscribe so you get more of this good review content. Uh, At the end of the month, I'll hopefully be bringing back some gaming, some reviews. We'll see how it goes. I'm also looking to start a live streaming channel, so... 
look for announcements on that in the coming months, assuming it's not more than a couple weeks before I can get it up and running. So thank you for joining me. I hope to see you on our next adventures, Dungeon Dwellers. But until then, leave your mom alone. Make sure you call her. Why is the last two films have been about mothers and about what happens when they don't treat us you right?